Explores centuries old. Oh, you know, Will Esteladovich explores this fight in her book, Bad Sex, and shares her own journey to find more satisfying relationships with men. That Saturday at 11 on WFAD. Mostly cloudy skies tonight with a low of 31 degrees. Windy, gust up to 21 miles an hour. Saturdays, mostly sunny with a high near 45. Gusty winds again up to 23 miles an hour. Clear skies Saturday night, low 26 degrees. Sunny on Sunday, high of 51. It's 46 in Charlotte and Rock Hill, 41 in Hickory. And you Super friend NPR comes from this station. And from Mattress Firm, dedicated to providing personalized service with the goal of helping people sleep well so they can live well. Customers can shop their range of products in-store or online at mattressfirm.com. And from Procter & Gamble, maker of Align Probiotic, a daily supplement to support digestive health, containing a probiotic strain developed by gastroenterologists with 20 years of research. More at alignprobiotics.com. From NPR News, this is All Things Considered. I'm Juana Summers. And I'm Mary Louise Kelly. President Biden capped a week of high-level diplomacy by hosting Japan's Prime Minister at the White House today. Japan recently decided to start its biggest military buildup since World War II. And the Biden administration is all for that, as it tries to work with allies to counter Chinese aggression in the region. NPR's Michelle Kellerman reports. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida visited Rome, Paris, London, and Ottawa before arriving at the White House, touting his new national security strategy and big budget increases for defense. Calling President Biden Joe, the Japanese Prime Minister said the two countries must play a greater role together on the world stage. Biden said the two are closer than ever. Just this week, the Defense Department announced plans for a new Marine force on Okinawa, one that would be more agile and able to respond to or deter Chinese military threats against Taiwan. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced plans to cooperate with Japan in space. I think what you're seeing in real time is an alliance that is modernized. And the United States and Japan are working in lockstep to be prepared for the emerging challenges in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. The big challenge is China, but Russia's war in Ukraine has also shaken the global order. Today's uh, Ukraine uh, could be tomorrow's uh, Asia. That's Noriyuki Shikata, cabinet secretary for public affairs in the prime minister's office. If you allow change of status quo in Ukraine, there could be other attempts to change the status quo in other parts of the world, including in Asia. Meaning Taiwan? Including Taiwan. He told NPR that China's more assertive behavior is not the only reason that Japan is embarking on a military buildup. North Korea continues to launch missiles in violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Japan is president of the council this month, but getting anything done there is difficult since Russia and China have veto power. Chikanta says the Japanese government will focus on new defensive capabilities. Prime announced uh, his intention for Japan to equip itself with so-called counter-strike capability uh, for defensive you know, purposes. Uh, this is to deter aggressions uh, or the use of force uh, against Japan. How to pay for this is still under debate, and Japan's government is facing domestic blowback for talk of tax hikes. Japan also has to walk a fine line not to provoke China. A Chinese government spokesman commenting on the announcements from Washington this week said any cooperation between the U.S. and Japan should not harm the interests of third parties. Shikata says Japan and the U.S. want stability, especially around Taiwan. We are seeing eye to eye between uh, Japan and the United States. That peaceful settlement based on dialogue on uh, Taiwan Strait issues uh, should be pursued. The Biden administration often describes its approach to China with three words, invest, align, and compete. This week's meetings were all about aligning with a key regional ally, Japan. Michelle Kellerman, NPR News, Washington. The sound of a bowling ball crashing into 10 pens, well, if you're lucky, is one thing that could change with the rise of new technology at the bowling alley. A shift
effect is underway in how bowling pins are reset using strings instead of the big mechanical arms. Alley owners say that the new system saves money, but pro bowlers like Brianna Cote say the pens interact differently and can make it a little harder to score a strike. You can kind of leave some weird, like, Tetris designs, I would say, you know, just because of, of how they fall and how the pins interact with each other. In addition to those Tetris-like pen configurations, she says the new pens also change the sound of the game, like the melodious racket of a perfect strike. I can compare it to a basketball going to the net, you know, and it's like nothing but net, just like music to basketball players' ears. It can be that way for a bowler too, but uh, I mean, I'm not too picky of how I strike, if it sounds perfect or not, I'm going to take a strike. <laughs> Reporter Ben Kessling wrote about this bowling tech overhaul in the Wall Street Journal. Hey, Ben. Hey, how are you? I am well. All right. So for those of us who are not aficionados in the world of bowling alley technology, what's so different about this new system? Well, everybody knows what the traditional bowling pen setter is, right? Like the pins, they're stand on their own. You knock them down, the big arm sweeps them, they set them down, and that's that's the way we all grew up with bowling. Well, there's a new technology where there's cords that come out of the top of some bowling pins, and when the pins get knocked down, instead of uh, getting swept up and then reset, they just get picked up like marionettes and then lowered carefully back onto their spots. But the thing is, those strings are always attached to the pins, so when they get knocked down, those strings have a little bit of play <laughs> in the way that those pins interact with each other. Could that inter interfere with somebody's bowling, say, another frame if they don't knock down all those 10 pins? Well, it could and it does, according to the United States Bowling Congress. So they've done mechanical testing with their robotic bowling arm known as Earl. And Earl found that there are fewer strikes, there's odder uh, splits that come out of that, and that Bowling is, is perceivably changed with the advent of these string pen setters. Uh, now, proprietors of bowling alleys say, look, this new technology is more affordable, it's easier to maintain, and, you know, frankly, there aren't a lot of bowling alley mechanics out there. They're getting older, and not a lot of young people are coming into the business. So these new ones are coming in as a cost savings measure and in a way to keep bowling alleys alive. But league bowlers and professionals say, look, Having those pins being able to fall down, watching the magic of those things spin and may maybe topple, maybe not topple, who knows what's going to happen. That's all part of the heart of the game. Do you have a sense of how widely string pins have been rolled out so far? Like if I go to my local bowling alley, is there a chance that might be how the game's played there? Yeah, there is a good chance of that. Uh, there are thousands of these units that have been fielded, you know, not across just America, but across the world. You know, when you go to your local alley, like maybe the one from your hometown, if you're from a small hometown or something, odds are they're still going to have the traditional pen setters because the cost of switching them out is so expensive. But if you go to some of these bigger, newer bowling alleys, especially ones that are just built, you might find these string pens and you might not find them to be the bowling experience that you're looking for. You know, I will just be completely transparent here. I have not bowled in a while. I am also not a good bowler, but I have all these memories of growing up in Kansas City when my mom would take me to the bowling alley not far from our house and I would bowl badly, often with bumpers. And I remember those sounds you're talking about and the clatter of the pins and the way that the games remember, the way that new generations of bowlers grow up into it, that might look and sound different now, yeah? Yeah, why? Well, and interestingly enough, I spoke to a scholar of nostalgia for this story, and uh, this, this this person said, "Hey, when you go to the bowling alley, you're in in a way stepping back in time, whether you know it or not. You lace up your shoes, you get your ball." And you transport it back to memories of the past, whether it was when you were a kid bowling or the black and white photos that you see on bowling alley walls. You're able to suspend your time in, in the here and now and go back to something else. And that's something that is as much part of going bowling as the act of bowling itself. That's Ben Kesling, reporter at The Wall Street Journal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Is that okay with you or you want to go home? That's okay with me.
Oh, you need a pee? since February of 2019 because they used to have a GMS where we would go bowling and they, like the high school kids like the uh, one of the Lions Clubs in one of the towns near Raleigh in Wake Forest had um, had this program where they had like high school like normie, like normie high school kids volunteering a bowl with us blind high school kids we used to have so much fun I know I was just thinking about that shit I thought about that I better go bowling before they all switch the sounds There's one over there by Moosehead that we used to go yeah. to. Oh man, I remember that one too because we used to go um, my, when I was in Myers Park every other Friday. I can't remember, but sometimes on Fridays we would go bowling during PE and health class. Hey, can I ask you a question? What? No, it doesn't start at 1, I think it starts at 4.30. 4.30, that makes more sense for Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we should get at Wally World? What? That I ran out of? Uh, the Prime Minister from Japan. Yes. It's a regular one, I get it. You know he's. The, you know that they have the presidential guest house, the Blair House. That's where they all stay at when they go to the White House. Right, Daddy? God, I used to love that trick question. I used to get the teacher every time when I would ask about the address of the White House. Yeah, we all, when we were walking on Pennsylvania Avenue the, our last day, we almost made it to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Southeast. Washington DC I would have loved to live in that apartment complex be like yeah I live at the White House guys I see Joe Biden every day and I know he sucks <laughs> yeah our podcast we have something at the end called we have a segment called Ice Up which, like, you know how when, remember that game on Monday Night Football when Steve Smith uh, was going against Aqib Tlaib and Aqib Tlaib was being an ass? And Steve Smith was like, and he didn't, and Tlaib didn't finish the game, and Steve Smith was like, Ice up, son, toughen up, get it together. Well, we have a segment where the, everyone, on the, everyone on the panel picks somebody that they think is up.
and tells them to ice up and toughen up and get it together. Well, on Tuesday, somebody did Joe Biden's Twitter team because they said Joe Biden made sec Social Security higher for everyone. And then they actually got fact checked by Twitter and so actually Social Security is not adjusted for inflation. So Joe Biden making Social Security higher for everyone means that he made inflation higher for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, it was funny. Brothers, people are stupid and they don't realize that. Yep. They don't realize inflation is a tax. And if you, if that crowd wanted to argue, wanted to have a legitimate chance and argue that inflation is racist, even though that's a flawed argument, they kind of have a point. Well, they could say it's they could say it's classes, huh? Well, who does inflation impact more? Poor people or poor people? Yep, exactly. What the fuck? What are they doing? This guy has totally fucked up. In the wrong lane. What the fuck are you doing? Better get away from him. We just got mom's car painted. I know. It's in the wrong lane. Remember what I asked you? I know.